Blackstone Boulevard right now. If you're familiar, major, major street over there that runs through several cities now. This person has pretty much stayed in this part of uh, South Los, uh, East, Southeast Los Angeles, uh, bordered by several freeways, the 10, the 110, the, the 105, and the 710. But we really haven't seen that person getting on the freeways in the stolen LAFD ambulance just yet hitting corners really hard. I think the most nerve wracking part of this has been watching them go down these side streets where there's very little room to maneuver. Jasmine, we've seen families out there lighting fireworks, mm -hmm. even though they're not supposed to, they're there. This person's going the wrong way now on the wrong side of the road, wow. swerving like crazy. This has just been a wild pursuit. Well, and it's a Saturday, so you know, there are more cars out there on the road, people who have gone out uh, to their, you know, relative parties or wherever they were gonna go. So yeah, it, it, it is very nerve wracking to watch this. And I'm just hoping drivers are also just caught off guard to have something to have this ambulance coming in so fast and, and giving them little time to even get out of the way again, blowing right through that intersection. Uh, I think that luckily he had a green light. So that bus, there was a city Oof. bus there that had just, wow, going over some train tracks that had come to a stop luckily because it, this, yeah, I'm, I think it clipped maybe one car, Sarah, we might've saw earlier, but so far it has not, we have not seen him hit any drivers. Yeah, we keep talking about the fact that at least, at the very least, that this person has lights and sirens on. And so people may think to get out of the way simply because they may not realize this is a pursuit at this Ugh. point. Oh God, but just drive. I mean, this is, is so nerve wracking to watch this and to know that it is 4th of July and that there are people out, whether they are supposed to be or not. And this really has a potential to end in tragedy. Yeah. I, I hope and I pray that we don't see that tonight, Jazz. I just wonder how this happened. And, uh, you know, I'm guessing stopped at a, a, a call, but I don't know what would compel someone to then jump in and steal an ambulance. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty easy to spot. So you can't think, right. Dave, that you're going to get away easily, especially considering lights and sirens are on. And there are a lot of buttons to press in there. There's right. usually a computer screen where they can see dispatch and see calls. There's a radio. Well, so and the fact that everyone was out of the ambulance and this was able to happen, which we assume we, we saw in the ambulance it didn't look right. like there was anybody else in there. We don't know how many suspects are in there. But Dave, you know, I think for a helicopter pilot or a spotter up in the helicopter for the police department, hmm. at least they're able to, to keep eyes on this pretty easily, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then especially with mutual aid, <laughs> All the departments can speak to each other, you know, so you have the helicopter overhead, especially if it's the sheriff's, which I, I'm not sure if it is or not, but they have the mutual aid capability. So the TFO or, or with the uh, tactical flight deputy, TFD, what they'll do if it's the sheriff's helicopter is they'll just uh, broadcast over whatever city, whatever police department, they'll switch to that frequency and put out the, uh, the broadcast about where the suspect is at. All right, now eastbound on Gage, that is the last direction we had. He keeps turning, or she, whoever, the, this driver just keeps making these sharp turns. And, you know, it does make you wonder, are they familiar with this neighborhood? Do they even have a destination you know, they're I trying think to get to? But We hear from, from law enforcement sources sometimes who say that that happens, you know, that, that, that people in pursuits go back to neighborhoods that they know. But sometimes, honestly, Jasmine, it just seems like aimless driving. And we right. just don't know because it's just so hard to speculate as to the frame of mind of a person who would steal an ambulance, for goodness sake. Uh, but we really have seen a lot of surface streets driving. We haven't seen them get on the freeway, which would really change the dynamic here. Dave, and it looks like we're coming to a stop. Ooh. Maybe we're gonna see a bailout gonna here. Get out. And, so. but, but we don't lights know. Lights off. Lights off now. We don't know how far that unit on the ground is. That's okay. the night sun. We're running with something in their hands. It it's looks a like woman. a woman, yeah. We think running down the sidewalk. They're trying to light her up with that spotlight. Carrying something. Oh my gosh, I thought for a second it was a baby. My oh, heart stopped. I hope not. Um, yeah. Yeah, Dave. Would... We don't actually see that unit on the ground. They may not. Uh, they may not be back there. In which case, I imagine up in the helicopter, they're radioing back, trying to get somebody on the ground, oh, wow. right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and they'll. they'll what they're going to do is they're going to broad broadcast where the location is, where the suspect stopped, where she stopped actually. And then they're going to broadcast a description of the suspect and that she possibly is carrying something, but uh, who knows what she's carrying. I don't know if they could see better than us, but mm -hmm. but definitely going to uh, deploy the units. One other thing that they're going to do that the air units, uh, any air unit is really good at, is they're going to set up, start setting up a perimeter. They probably won't they'll direct one unit into where she was last seen running, but then they'll grab another unit and set one up, maybe a block going the other side. I'm not sure which way that would be. 
and then they'll set up a uh, uh, diagonal. Mm -hmm. They'll set up a diagonal deployment, and they'll lock that block in. And what they'll do is they'll start directing units in, maybe request a K-9 to mm -hmm. respond to the location. But still, we got to check out that vehicle because we're not real sure who else was in there. We didn't get a real good look. Yeah, that's sure. true. That's I remember, surprise. you know, yeah. when I was younger, the LASD airship being over the house a couple of times and radioing down on that loudspeaker to people to get inside their homes and lock their doors because mm -hmm. they were looking for, for somebody, a burglary suspect or whatever it was. So I know that they have the option of doing that. And there are probably a lot of unsuspecting people. Look, uh, as you can see, Dave, this is a multifamily complex here. There's some homes, maybe a duplex there, an apartment complex. So a lot of people probably wondering what's going on right now down there. Yeah, absolutely. So the air unit is talking to them. We don't see the units, but they are in the vicinity. So the, the, the primary thing right now for an air unit is just to set a perimeter. And that way uh, you get the suspect locked in here now. The one thing about with law enforcement is you have time. You can, you have plenty of time. So you could set up a command post somewhere, recommend a command post location, have the units respond there while you're setting up the perimeter. Get the canine there, put out the description, and then they'll start looking methodically. Just start through exactly what the air unit last seen her running. Wow. How, how I guess, I know everything... I'm trying to look at these people on the sidewalk. They're probably pointing to officers where this person where this person ran. So some witnesses saw where she was headed. But this is a very tense high. I would say high risk. Oh, she, they she got is. her. Yeah. OK, so yeah. she didn't make it very far, Dave. But how tense of a situation because you don't want to hurt an innocent bystander, obviously. But you need to get this suspect in custody. And you've seen that gentleman who actually took her over there. And I was 